Okay. So thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. I know this is a little bit um, unconventional um, school visit, but with the current circumstances, we really just wanted to still reach out to you guys and um, meet you as a class or you meet us. I have some awesome panelists tonight, a few students, some friendly faces that your children or your family might know, um, a parent representative, and then two of our administrators. I am gonna start with Mr. Jim Leary. He is our acting president right now. He's just gonna to say hello and see um, you know how we run things around here and then Mr. Quintos our athletic director is going to chat with you guys for a little bit he does have to jump off for a PCL meeting since we are playing sports at Carroll finally um, so I do want to get him in before he has to jump so Jim why don't you take it away uh, Michelle thank you very much for that introduction uh, to the families out there my name is Jim Leary uh, just a little bit of background I'm a product of the Sisters of Mercy and the Christian Brothers uh, graduating from St. Joe's Collegiate Institute uh, in Buffalo, New York. Um, I've been involved with uh, Catholic schools, not as my career, uh, but I also I helped coach at Gonzaga High School in Washington, D.C., and also served as the commissioner of the Washington Catholic Athletic Conference for over seven years while I was managing the business operations of large law firms, which I did for 37 plus years. The Archdiocese just recently recruited me to uh, uh, to help out with the schools here. And uh, when Mr. Fox uh, uh, resigned to go back into the private sector, uh, they asked me to come and uh, stand in at a Carroll. And it's just been a great experience. And my mission while I'm here at Carroll is to make every, all of our students and all our incoming students feel about Archbishop Carroll the way I feel about the high school that I went to, uh, which I still uh, support and it was a great experience for me. So uh, welcome to Carol. I think you'll enjoy meeting everybody and I'll turn it back to Michelle. Thanks, Jim. Um, Mr. Quintos, why don't you kick it off with some awesome news about Carol Sports. Hi everyone, thanks for having me. Uh, this is, these are really good times right now as we're playing sports again and I couldn't be more excited and also more busy. So I'm very thankful, feel very blessed for the opportunity to um, once again return to the fields or the gyms um, as we are doing now. Uh, just a little bit about Carroll Athletics. Um, I talk about Carroll Athletics um, in the highest regard because of our culture. Our culture in all of athletics is one that is inclusive, uh, it's very competitive. Um, it's very opportunistic for uh, incoming freshmen and um, with great pride. Um, I also say that um, it's academic and spiritual. Um, we're very blessed to have Father Mark um, and his predecessor, Father Spez, really set the table. Uh, Father Mark not only is uh, our campus minister and um, just an outstanding resource for our students, but he's also a coach and he coaches three seasons with us. And um, I couldn't feel um, more blessed to have him on our staff. Our coaches are um, coaches that care. Um, they're competitive, they wanna win and I want them to win. And, um, but they're, they're individuals that care about kids. They work really hard. Um, when I talk about our student athletes, and there's a bunch that are on here, um, you're talking about kids that do not just sports, they do activities. And we really encourage that. Um, we encourage you to do multiple sports, multiple activities. I run my own um, club, which is the Interact Club. It's unbelievable. And we have kids from all um, – you know, across the school. It's not just athletes, uh, but we want our kids involved in everything. I will tell you this, um, you know, you, when you're choosing a school, it's, it's difficult. Everybody, everybody is really talented. Everybody's really good, but this is a school about opportunity and our kids get a chance to compete in 28 sports and they're not all the same type of typical sports. We have some unusual sports, that our kids really enjoy getting involved with. Um, but we also have the opportunity to compete in the Philadelphia Catholic League, which is the best. Um, in, and it's, it's fun um, to be in the Catholic League. Uh, so competing here is about um, 
It's about being a student athlete. It's about opportunity, whether it's playing on the fencing team or trying out for crew or bocce, uh, competing in the Catholic League. And then also um, for our talented kids, which we have so many, we have kids that compete and then go and play in college. We just had a recent announcement from one of our kids, uh, fortunate enough to coach her, Kylie Matisse, is just signing with University of uh, North Carolina for lacrosse. That happens a ton at Carroll. Um, so I thank you for having me. I do have to go to a PCL meeting. Um, I can be, and I will get back to you immediately. My information is on the website if you have specific questions. I'd be glad to answer them. Um, I really look forward to meeting people in person and we get away from the Zoom stuff and you get to really experience who we are uh, and, and see the kind of athletic culture and, and also school culture that we have. We're really proud of that. So, oh, guess he froze a little bit. <laughs> Tom, can you hear us? You're frozen a little bit. All right. Well, he, you good? Can you hear us? I, I'm unmuted now. Yeah, you froze for a minute. Oops. That's okay. You were just, you were just thanking everyone. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I'll just end by, please reach out to me if you have any questions. There's always a ton of questions. No question is bad. And I will get back to you in seconds. So I have to jump onto a PCL meeting. Uh, I'll hang in as long as I can. Um, but again, if, if, if I'm not here and you have questions, certainly, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Great. Thank you, Mr. Quintos. Um, speaking of questions, um, now that, um, our two administrators have spoken, if you do have questions at any time as an eighth grade family, please drop them in the Q and A. If you hover over the bottom of your screen. Um, you will see that we will answer all questions tonight, um, either the students, myself, um, you know, Mrs. Mahady, who's our parent rep, um, we will answer all questions that you have. So feel free to drop them in as we go along. Um, the last few minutes will be for the, um, the Q&A. But I do want to turn it over to our students because they actually, you know, are the ones who usually lead our school visits if we were in person with you. So. Um, I'm going to start with Best Fry, um, since she is a senior, and then I'll kind of go with the rest of the seniors and then kind of down um, through the rest of the grade levels. We're expecting two more uh, panelists. Oh, there's one right now who are coming in from sports. We arranged this, obviously, uh, before we knew that sports were taking place. So some of our student athletes are jumping on um, a little bit later. But Best, why don't you start for everyone? Um, hello, my name is Elizabeth Fry, or Bess, um, that's my nickname. I'm a senior at Carroll, and the reason why I chose Carroll was because my sister went to the school, and like when I visited Carroll, I felt at home, and everyone was so nice, so I chose to go there. Um, the activities I do is CSC, Best Buddies, and Student Ambassadors, and my advice to all the eighth graders is to be yourself and be nice to everyone and participate at Carroll to make friends. Awesome, thanks Bess. Um, Teresa, why don't you go next? Hi, my name is Teresa. I'm a senior at Carroll. Um, I am currently a part of the National Honor Society Best Buddies CSC, their community program, and I'm also in, I'm also a student ambassador, and I chose Carol for its, like, music and arts programs, and its academics, and any advice for any eighth graders that I would give is to pick the school that feels most like home to you because you're going to be spending a lot of time and making like a second study at high school. Awesome. Thanks, Teresa. 
Cece, why don't you go next? Hi, um, I'm Cece Cherico. Um, I used to go to St. Helena's and I'm actually a senior at Carroll. Um, so what I'm involved in at Carroll is I play soccer, uh, part of ACTS, which is like the musicals and plays. Uh, I also am part of Student Ambassadors. I'm a representative for Student Council. Uh, and, I do, and I'm also part of CSC and National Honor Society. And uh, why I chose Carroll uh, honestly, it was the one high school that I really could feel at home and like I feel like I could make like a second family here and that's what it's been for for me. And then my advice to eighth graders is that no matter where you go, you definitely need to get involved because that's the best opportunity for you to connect to your school and to connect to others. Awesome. Thanks, Cece. Um, Sophia, why don't you go? Hi guys, I'm Sophia. Um, I'm a senior this year. I came from visitation. Um, right now I play softball. I'm involved in Best Buddies, Patriotthon, and National Honor Society. Um, my favorite thing about Carol is probably the teachers. I've had a lot of good teachers that help me out with like a lot of hard courses and they're the reasons why I do so good. Um, uh, I chose Carol as an eighth grader probably because I was really drawn to the athletics program. I'm a big athlete. And then also because it's a really diverse school. There's kids from everywhere and you just meet so many new people. Um, and the best advice I would probably give to you is just to get involved. Kind of what Cece said, like no matter what you do, whether it's sports, clubs, or acts, our theaters program, um, just do something and you just meet so many people through that. Awesome. Thanks, Sophia. Um, Judy, since you just came in from the best sport at Carroll, I might be a little bit biased because I am one of the volleyball coaches, but Judy, why don't you go next? Hi, I'm Judy. I'm a senior. Um, I went to visitation. I play volleyball at Carroll. I'm in student council, national Honor society, and best buddies. Um, my favorite thing about Carol really is just the community, the students and teachers, and everyone just cares so much about each other, um, especially right now, you know, figuring everything out, and it's been really good. Um, why I chose Carol was my brother went there, and I heard a lot of great things about it, and when I shot it, I really just held it at home and it felt like the right fit for me. And my best advice for you guys is don't choose a school just because a lot of your friends are going there. Um, I know it's scary if you're going to a school where you don't know many people, but you will meet your family and it'll all work out. So. Awesome, thanks Judy. Um, Aiden, why don't you go next? Um, hi, my name is Aiden Abuso, I'm a junior. Uh, at Carroll, I do uh, acts, which is basically theater, uh, TV crew, and um, game club. Uh, I always have to say my favorite thing at Carroll is probably the teachers. Uh, I end up choosing Carroll as an eighth grader because I had a lot of family who uh, went here, and also the fact of just I like the vibe. Um, uh, the best piece of advice I could possibly give to the eighth graders is probably just look ahead, constantly be looking at your opportunities in the future. Uh, don't let anything pass you by. And uh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Aiden. Um, so a lot of the students have been talking about different clubs and things that they're involved in, which we will go back to and explain to you guys a little bit more. Um, but I do want uh, Mrs. Mahady to chat with you guys. She is our parent rep. She's on the Parents Association. Um, and she's been around Carol for a very long time. So Mrs. Mahady, all you. You're muted. <laughs> there you go. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me and uh, welcome to this evening. I, um, I'm a parent of four Carroll students. Three are graduates and my son Kevin is a senior uh, with the uh, other students, the other seniors here. Um, my Twin boys graduated in 2016. Um, they were on, had the benefit of being on the soccer team for four years. And like Tom Quinto said, it really shapes you as a person. And um, they, 
they still have friends that they hang out with. They're one graduated from Pitt and one will graduate from University of Dayton in December. Carol, I remember when they started in the, I guess, September of their freshman year, we were around the dinner table and a bunch of their friends had gone to different high schools, some all boys, wherever. And um, they said, how did you find this school? Like, like it was, they, it, they thought it was such a good fit for them. And the only thing I can say is I, I was a graduate of Allentown Central Catholic High School in Allentown. And it reminded me when we toured it a lot of my high school uh, and the great community that I experienced and I wanted them to have the, the same thing. Um, and it was just really a gratifying thing to have them be that happy with kind of like what mom and dad picked. Um, I mean, they had input, but um, it worked out. And then my daughter graduated in 2019. She was involved in uh, soccer and tennis. She was the National Honor Society. And um, she actually did the diocesan scholar program, which is available to the Carroll students. And so she attended uh, Villanova University her senior year and got 12 credits um, through them, uh, in addition to the AP credit she was carrying. So it really, uh, it really was, it worked out great for her. Um, and then my son, Kevin, he started with soccer and he decided after two years, he liked golf. So he's doing the golf team now and, um, golf is actually postponed till the spring. So we jump back to soccer. Mr. Quinto said, sure, have him try out again. <laughs> so it, it's just, uh, he's had a great experience too. Uh, I enjoy having his friends over. I've bonded with many of the families over the years. Um, I would say very much a spiritual community. I remember that being, and still is, it's very important to me. Uh, and, and as, my husband as well, that we, we really wanted to find a school that shared our values um, and was not, you know, um, was, was our values. So um, I've loved the teachers along the way. I've always gotten a good response um, whenever there has been a question. Um, and now guidance is my son's applying to colleges and you know, that's a big part of your life, junior and senior year. Um, and they're, they're a big support in that department as well. Um, but we've been very happy and um, I'm gonna miss Carol when Kevin graduates. So I'll have to find a fundraiser to stick with. Or you something. can always help out my office, Mrs. Mahady, you know that. <laughs> um, Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Um, so. Um, before we do start answering questions, I will touch base um, on the uh, some of the things that the students mentioned so that way not everyone is just asking what those things are because there was a lot of um, very unique and very interesting things um, that our students uh, did talk about. So to start off, uh, Mr. Quintos did mention three very unique sports to Carol. Um, those are, well, one is not as unique because it's starting to become bigger, but it's crew. Um, we do have a crew team. They do race in the fall and in the spring and they have their winter workouts as well, um, becoming a very, very large team at Carroll. The other two sports that he mentioned were fencing and bocce. Um, so fencing is a very unique sport in general. We're one of only two schools, I think, you know, on this side of Pennsylvania that actually have fencing. So it's very awesome um, to watch the kids get involved with that. And then um, bocce is actually what we um, call a unified sport. Um, and one of the students, I can't remember who said it now, um, talked about best buddies. Um, well, at Carroll, we actually have a school within our school, the St. Catherine's Day School. Um, for those of you who don't know what um, that school is, it's a school for students who um, need um, extra help in uh, life skills, um, as well as academically, um, that are disabled. Um, so it's an awesome thing for our students to actually be able to be a part of um, Best Buddies as a club where, you know, they get to hang out with them and do fun things, fundraisers, you know, projects, everything. But Unified Bocce takes it to the athletic 
um, realm. So those St. Catherine students actually play with the Carroll students against other schools, which is really awesome. Um, so, you know, like to tie in with the best buddies piece, um, some of the students mentioned CSC, that's our community service corps, uh, mainly run through our student, or um, I'm sorry, our campus ministry office, Father Mark, um, you know, Mr. Quintos talked about and all of you St. Philip Neary um, families out there, I'm sure you've all experienced Father Spez, um, which we we're so sad to lose him, but we're so happy that, you know, you guys get to now experience um, the awesome Father Spez. Um, but they run this, um, the uh, CSC. And um, Judy, did you say CSC? Who said CSC? Um, CC, I think. One of you guys, why don't you talk um, a little bit about what you guys have done with CSC? Uh, CSC, CC, why don't you go first? Okay, um, so for CSC, we do like a Thanksgiving drive and we also do um, like a Christmas drive. So for Thanksgiving, um, we try to get like lots of items. So we get like pans, we get food, like mashed potatoes and corn and everything. And then we put it all together um, like over two days. Everyone comes together and just it's like an assembly line. And then we deliver it to uh, different parishes that are in need. And then around Christmas, we um, collect a lot of like presents or toys for um, also kids that are in need. So. Awesome. Yeah, great. Um, I do have one more student who just jumped on, another one of my awesome volleyball players. So um, quick interlude. I do want Emily Gallagher to introduce herself and just say hi to everyone out there from Holy Rosary. So Em, why don't you introduce yourself? Um, tell us what you do at Carroll and why you chose Carroll. Okay, so hi, I'm Emily Gallagher, and I am a senior, and I chose Carol just because, like, I knew a lot of people, like, that went there, and they just, like, had, like, such good friends, and, like, just relationships, even, like, with, like, staff and all, which I feel like is really important just to have that, like, connection, I guess, and then... I joined volleyball and that was like one of like the best decisions. Like I've met some of my best friends and like, it's just like such a joy like to get to like play with them. And it's like such a good environment and like everyone is friends and like, it just feels like, you know, like I just knew everyone like right away, like everyone was so welcoming. And like, even like Michelle, like being assistant coach, like just like right away, like, I was like, I feel like I kind of like belong like in this team and like, yeah. So it's and really a like little frozen. good place and like a lot of good people. And especially if you're considering like sports, definitely volleyball. Cause I feel like, especially the girls, like I've, can you hear me? You're a little bit frozen, but we can still hear you. Can Keep you hear going. me now? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So definitely like if you're considering volleyball, like I feel like it's, such like a great like environment and like seriously like some of my best friends and like that like means a lot to me so yes awesome thanks em i might come back to you for some other questions <laughs> um okay so um going back to other things that carol um you know does have um mrs mahady did mention our guidance program um as well as uh the diocesan scholars program so i do want to touch on those um, the guidance program we actually have at Carol, it's called Carol U. Um, and it is, there's a program within our guidance office that the students actually get assigned counselors and they um, work with those counselors and all of the different programs that you do need for a college admissions process right with our counselors, um, pretty much starting in their sophomore year. Um, so it really does, um, like everyone kind of has been touching on the relationship, um, you know, that is created to make sure that our kids are get, we're, well, they're getting the most out of their experience and we're giving them the most opportunity that they can to be successful for the future. The diocesan scholars program, and Ms. Tahiti, I will let you talk specifically about it if you did wanna, you know, any more, but she did touch on what, you know, the um, process is 
is it's for our juniors and seniors um, and they can actually gain college credit um, while still in high school to carry with them to whatever college they choose. Um, I don't know, is there anything that you wanted to add to that as you know, how it benefited your daughter or anything like that? I mean, I know you did say that already, but um, any other you know, tidbits of information you wanna give the families? Um, just that a lot of people would say, well, how is it possible that you could attend college and high school at the same time? And basically the administration arranges it so that the student goes to the college and it's, it's not just Villanova, it's also other um, Catholic, college. Catholic colleges in the area. Um, Villanova just geographically made the most sense for us, but Cabrini was, is also one of the, one of the um, colleges and uh, I'm trying to remember. There's, There's a bunch. Um, yeah. It depends on what the student I think wants to do in the class. Yeah. Anyway, so basically they're going to two classes in the morning and then they're returning to Carroll or arriving at Carroll by third period, which they usually give those students as their lunch. So there is enough time to basically go to these two classes and still, you know, arrive and interact with your classmates the rest of the day. But um, between the APs and the 12 credits at Villanova, um, you know, she went into Pitt with 24 credits. I mean, that if, if you're that dedicated a student, it's, it's available to you. My other children did not go that route and, you know, they're just fine. But I'm just saying, like, it is available to you to do. And um, she took advantage of it. Great, thanks. The last thing that I will add for that, I'm pretty sure that the credits are free, the college oh. courses. Yep, yeah, so if your child is selected as a diocesan scholar, um, those classes that they would take at those colleges actually are free to you um, while they're in high school. So it's pretty awesome. Um, we do have 17 AP classes. There is a course catalog on our website. If you go to the, admission, I'm sorry, the academics tab, you can actually see the course catalog for the 2020-21 school year. Um, there are things in that um, that actually, you know, um, may not be available this year, depending on the level of interest, but we always hold them because um, we will offer classes that students, you know, have an interest in. And that is all broken down to them by Mr. Gennaro, our assistant principal for academics, um, when they do get to Carol at the end of their freshman year, and then obviously at the end of um, all of the years going forward. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about the admissions piece, since this is doubling as an info night, as well as a school visit, and then I will start um, opening um, any questions up to our students or for whoever you might have. Um, as of today, we do have 207 applications for the freshman class, which is awesome since our application's been open um, just about two months now. Um, so we're looking for more. It's still not too late. Um, we are still accepting applications, you know, through the fall and then even into the springtime, it does become more of a rolling admissions process. But if you do complete the application, as well as to get the um, required documents in um, by November 30th, you will have a Christmas decision of acceptance, um, as well as financial aid if you are interested in that since the application for that is also open. So the best way to get started on these two things is to visit the Carroll admissions page of the website, you'll see the apply button and then there's also a drop down to um, access the financial aid um, application as well. Um, once you do submit the application, though, using the school admin portal, um, you will be asked to upload documents, um, seventh grade, final grades, the most recent standardized testing scores, and then when you get them, the eighth grade first quarter or first trimester um, grades. But all of that doesn't need to be completed um, until the end of November, if not the beginning of December. Like I said, um, you know, we do have some time. Um, there are some schools who will release records to parents for direct upload, or if you do have copies of these things at home, please feel free to upload them yourselves. Um, if your school is one of the schools that you know would rather send us the information um, directly, that's totally fine. Um, just please make sure when you do ask for those records to be sent that you do say that they are sent electronically to us. Um, the important pieces of the admissions process um, usually are the grade school visit, the shadow day, um, the scholarship test, and an open house. 
obviously that looks completely different this year. Um, but we do still have some virtual things besides tonight that are happening. Um, we have a virtual open house that we'll be dropping on our website on Sunday morning, this coming Sunday, October 11th. It will be up for the entire week, if not the entire rest of the month um, for your viewing. So please make sure that you do um, get on the website um, on Sunday or at some point next week and watch the really awesome interactive uh, virtual open house that we are putting together for you. Um, also a virtual shadow day. Um, since our students cannot get to campus right now, we are hoping for the spring semester to be able to open up shadows again, but we don't know for sure yet. Um, but there will be a virtual shadow day that our student council president will be working on and we will post that for you next week as well. Um, the last two points that I want to talk about um, are our walkthrough tour. Um, that is really the only way right now we can bring families onto campus um, instead of having an open house. Um, so if you are interested in walking through the school building, um, more information about this will be sent out and posted next week, but we do have one day available right now for 30 minute, through, 30 minute walk through tours that you will have to sign up for a, a time slot um, to get onto campus. Um, and that'll be on October 17th. And again, all of this information will be posted, will be sent out um, next week. So don't feel as though you need to scramble to write things down. Um, you will get the communication about it. But um, that would be the only way we could welcome, you know, visitors on campus is for that one day. If there is a tremendous amount of interest, since we do have limited time slots, I will see if we can potentially get another um, day on the calendar for November, but it does have to be approved before I can do so. Um, and then our la the last point I want to talk about, um, some of you have already taken the scholarship test um, that was this past Saturday. We still have two more um, dates available. They are virtual. Um, so you'll get the instructions and the directions from me the week before the test as to, you know, what that will look like, but you still do have to register and you can do that again on our website. An application for the school must be submitted before your child can take the scholarship test. The best way to access all of the information um, that I just talked about is visiting the Carroll admissions pandemic information page. And that there's a big icon, there's a big C right on the front page of the admissions tab of the website. That gives you all of the up-to-date information um, as to what this admission season will look like. And then as we continue into the school year, I will be updating it with new things um, you know, that are coming up as well. So that's really my two bits about the admissions process. I am welcome, to, um, I'm sorry, I'm open and welcome to answer any questions that you might have about um, any of the things that I just talked about if something doesn't make sense. But I do wanna start, um, you know, answering, or there's a few questions down here and I do want our students to start talking to your students, um, you know, about anything that they might be interested in. So the first, question is about clubs. So we did hit on um, a couple, but Sophia mentioned something called Patriotthon. So Sophia, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Okay, so Patriotthon, um, it's this big event we hold usually in March, I believe. Um, last year is a little bit different, but usually we're there for, what is it, 12 hours? Yep. Um, it's kind of like a thon like at Penn State, if that rings a bell. Um, it's a big organization um, found, or fundraiser for many organizations. Um, one is for CHOP. Um, I think another one's for... Yeah, like Catholic. Religion. Yeah, that one. <laughs> um, and then we hold a couple um, smaller fundraisers throughout the year. So like one is, um, I know we have like a Halloween movie night. I think we do a bingo. So the whole year... Um, all of the members just work on setting up for this huge fundraiser and raising as much money as we can and getting donations and all that kind of thing. And um, you don't have to be part of the club to go to the event, but so many people go. It's so much fun. Um, I don't even know any students who haven't gone. So, yeah. Yeah, I would say it's one of our biggest clubs for sure. Um, Aiden, why don't you chat um, a little bit about the Archbishop Carroll Theater Society? Um, since you had an awesome role in Fiddler, 
um, and just let us know, you know, what it's like and what you guys do and anything you want to add about that. Um, yeah. So, uh, the theater society is called Axe, Archbishop Carroll Theater Society. It's a, it's a pretty fun program. Uh, it's pretty much just, uh, it's, it's quite similar to how, uh, theater was when I was in grade school. I went to SBN. Um, it's just very much expanded, um, you know, much larger uh, stage, cast, sets. And uh, yeah, uh, our director is Meg. She's great. Uh, and we all have a good time. Um, how many shows do you guys do a year? Um, it's a little bit different this year. Because, well, yeah, with the exception yeah. of this year. <laughs> um, but uh, usually we'll do a uh, fall show and then a, uh, a spring show uh, each year. And both of those are musicals. So, yeah. Yes. Great plug for acts. Um, the other thing that I do want to mention about um, the Archbishop Carroll Theater Society is it's also not just the acting part and the dancing part. Um, someone is or did ask a question about our music programs. Um, so um, the, our band at Carroll, actually, it can be a class but it also, there's multiple op opportunities and options for bands. So we have a jazz band, we have a wind ensemble, um, we have a pep band that plays at our football games, a concert band, but we also have a really unique opportunity um, that our carol band students actually get to play in the pit um, of the orchestra of our shows um, alongside some professionals as well. So I think that that's always worthy of mentioning when we talk about acts because our student you know, musicians also get to be a part of it, which is awesome. Zach Larimer is our band director and he actually is an Eagles drum liner um, during the you know, normal times. But um, so he really brings in a lot of um, awesome you know, uh, perspective and really unique things for our students to get involved in when it comes to um, the band at Carroll. So I do always put that in there with acts as well, because it's really cool to see our students, um, you know, sitting in the pit playing in the orchestra. Um, any other activities that you guys can think of um, that you would like to talk about? Beth, you mentioned, you know, student ambassadors, you're obviously here tonight. So that makes you a student ambassador. But do you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, sure. So through student ambassadors, you help out the school a lot, you give tours, you work um, on the different events that the school puts on. And I just feel like student ambassadors is a lot of fun because a lot of my friends do it and I made a lot of friends through it. And um, it's just fun welcoming people to the school and talking about the school and getting people to come to the school because it's a really great school. So. Come here. So going off of that, there's a question here and it says, why should I choose Carol over another school? What makes you guys different? Why don't you touch on that? And then maybe I'll ask a couple other people to jump in too. Um, for me, Carol is like a big family and the people at Carol are really genuine and real. And there's a lot of different people who go to Carol and it's just, it's different than every other school, I think. And um, if you're looking for a good school, you have to come to Carroll because of the people. I just say the people is the best part. That's a great way to put it. I love hearing that because I would definitely agree. Teresa, why don't you chime in too, um, you know, as a senior, what have you found over your three, now four years? Um, I like Carroll because they offer a lot of different kinds of classes. Like, no matter what you're into, you're always going to find something that, like, you'll be able to learn about. Or even, like, all the clubs, like, there's so many different types, like, whether you're into, like, music or art or, like, sports or even, like, just, like, acting and something like that you can like find something and other people who enjoy the same things as you. Awesome. Thanks. And Cece, why don't you kind of end that question for us? Um, okay. So obviously there's a lot of different reasons why Carol's amazing. And I think a lot of people mentioned it earlier, but the teachers and like just the people you have surrounded around you, like they're always here to help you and they're always like willing to do the most for you. 
But also I think that um, our faith aspect is also really important because it makes us different because it's so strong at Carol. Like we have lunchtime prayer services. We have um, lots of retreats throughout the years. And like anyone can just um, go into the chapel just to relax or pray, or you can talk to the priest. Like everyone's there to help you. And like the faith really helps that and also creates like a certain community that you wouldn't really find anywhere else. That's a great point too um, about our faith life. So obviously Carol is first and foremost a Catholic school. Um, but what I've always said, and if Father Mark was on tonight, he would say too that Carol meets you where you are in regards to your faith. So if you're not Catholic, that's okay. Um, we have kids that actually, you know, come to Carol that really aren't very in touch with their faith whatsoever. And it has changed them into, you know, wanting to be. And that's really awesome to see. But nothing's forced on our students either. Our students want to participate in community service. They want to participate in lunchtime prayer services um, and our retreats every year that we have um, because they feel so comfortable, I think, you know, in our schools. So what the three students said, you know, about just the community aspect, I do echo that the Carroll community is, um, it's awesome to be a part of. And this is my third year at Carroll. I came from working at two other, you know, schools in the area. And um, I noticed it too, um, right away um, when I, you know, started at Carroll. And um, I think, I, you know, Mr. Leary has only been at Carroll for, you know, a couple weeks now, but um, I've even heard him say, um, you know, how welcoming the school was. So um, Jim, why don't you, I guess, maybe touch on that too. Yeah, again, uh, listen, I, this, is, this is actually very good for me to, uh, to sit in on, but um, there's just a real spirit here. Um, and the one thing that I latched on to um, that nobody's talked about yet, but, but the, Carol cares. And they care about each other. Um, the teachers care about the students. Um, the students care about each other. Uh, the parents that I've met have been outstanding. Uh, so I just I just have a really good feel for the 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 Carol family atmosphere and atmosphere and Carol cares and so uh, I'm excited uh, I'm excited to be here. Thanks, Jim. There are two easy questions that I can answer um, real quick, and then there is a question here about our art program. Um, so the two questions though um, did have to do with teacher um, student ratio as well as our current enrollment. So our current enrollment is about 620 students across the grades. Um, and then in regards to the um, faculty student ratio with the coronavirus, we obviously can't have more than 16 students in a classroom on any given day and that's per guideline. Um, but usually our classes are 24 to one. Sometimes there are some classes that are a little bit smaller than that, depending on the electives um, or if, you know, the grade level um, in general. So it's about that. Sometimes there's a little bit more in the core classes, but 24 to one usually. And then right now we can't have more than 16 students in any given class. Um, so the last question that I have here, and please feel free, we have about 10 minutes left um, to keep dropping questions in the Q&A. Um, is about the art program. Um, any, what, which of you guys can talk any about, you know, the art programs that we have? Um, anyone take um, photography or ceramics? Um, I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. Any of our students wanna jump in on that? Go ahead, Bess. I'm not a student, but- Oh, um, that's okay, Ms. Mahady, you can go oh, first. Oh, Bess, do you wanna go ahead? <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll just say real quick, my daughter did do four years of art um, at Carroll and um, the art, uh, the head of the art department is uh, Mrs. Lorraine Carpenter, absolutely lovely person who really inspires the students. Um, Aaron did not belong specifically to the art club, but one of the coolest things Mrs. Carpenter had the kids do was um, it was called the Memory Project, and basically, um, someone takes photos of children in need in South America and sends it to the Carroll students, the uh, Carroll art students, and they did their own sketch of these 
seven, eight, and nine-year-old kids um, as a gift to them because they have so little. But I mean, how special is that? You get a, a portrait of yourself. And the portraits were all done, you know, so well. The kids were um, so excited. And Mrs. Carpenter even videoed when the children received their portraits down in South America. It was just the neatest thing. So um, they definitely, she thinks outside of the box and uses their talents even to like help, um, you know, the needy. So that was my, one of my favorite experiences with the art. That's awesome. Um, Bess, anything you want to add? Um, so I've taken art my four years at Carroll, and I have to say it's my favorite class to go to because it's kind of like a break in your day. And um, usually the kids that you take art with, they do it all four years with you. And um, Mrs. Carpenter is the best, and her projects that she gives you are really creative and cool. Like um, I'm in 3D art this year and I just got done making um, an elephant out of like like wires and foam and stuff. And I don't know, the projects are really cool and it's a great class if you wanna do art in Car at Carroll, so. Awesome, thanks guys. Um, the Nolan Scholarship for the Arts is also a scholarship we offer to incoming freshmen. You do get it for the full years if your child is awarded a Nolan Scholarship. Um, it's for any kind of art, digital art, musical arts, um, visual arts, like these guys were talking about. Um, the application actually will be opened on um, the school admin portal starting in November. Um, so make sure you do look into that. It tells you exactly what you need to do on the application. Um, if your child is um, an artist, you know, color, you know, water colors, you know, ceramics, whatever, painting, um, you would submit a, a portfolio of some of their pieces. If your child is a musician or um, an actor, you would just um, submit um, a small, short clip of whatever they do. Um, but again, please access that through the school admin portal starting um, in November for the exact details. Um, the other thing that I want to touch on that's um, sort of art, but it's more so engineering, is our Project Lead the Way um, course track. Um, and that is for students who are very interested in engineering in the future um, for college and for a career. Um, so again, if you go on to the course catalog on the academics page, you can see actually what that progression of classes will look like. Um, this year actually is only the second year that we have had this program. Our principal actually brought it to us at the beginning of the 2019-20 school year. So last year was the first full year that we had it. And um, it really does talk to um, you know, engineering of the future and the principles of engineering and getting your child ready for something that they might want to go into as a career. Um, I, these guys are all older, so none of them are, you know, had the opportunity when they were an incoming freshman to be a part of this program, but it is really awesome. It's very, you know, selective in regards to, you know, grades and requirements. And Mr. Gennaro, um, our assistant principal for academics, like I said, does a really good job of talking to you guys as families in the springtime about this program. But I really do encourage everyone to get onto that course catalog and um, look and see what the Project Lead the Way course selection track would look like. Um, there's one more question here, and it's about our plan for next year um, to, um, I guess, be fully virtual or in person or half and half. Um, for right now, we are a hybrid model, so our kids come in every other day on an A, B cycle. We do have one day a month that we completely shut down for cleaning. Um, when they're not learning in the classroom, they are learning at home through cameras that are provided by the archdiocese right in the classroom. So they are learning in real time. Um, it's been definitely an interesting transition. Sometimes, you know, we have had some technical difficulties, but I've been really impressed with the kids as well as our faculty and staff um, in transitioning to this. And hopefully, um, you know, pending the guidelines, you know, by the state and um, the archdiocese, um, you know, we will be back in, you know, person full time um, in the spring, but we can't really talk to that now. Um, Jim, I'm not sure if you have anything else you would like to say about that or not. No, I, I, uh, the only thing I, I want to add that 
that since the we went to the hybrid model, the 17 uh, schools in the archdiocese, uh, there has been less than six uh, uh, COVID cases um, that have been identified. So we consider that to be a very successful uh, start um, to, to the school year. Um, and we're excited about it. Obviously, everybody would like to be back um, in person um, full time, uh, but we will, we will follow the science um, and do what's right for, uh, uh, for, for the students and their parents. Great, thanks. Um, any last minute questions? Uh, Mr. Quintos really did a good job of introducing sports, um, you know, uh, before he had to jump off, just to kind of recap on what he said. Um, you know, we have a lot of different options for students. Um, we do have coast, uh, um, sorry, single gendered uh, sports, obviously, but we do have um, co-ed as well, our cross country team, our track team, our crew team, our swim team. So we do have a lot of different options um, for our students. Um, like he said, we compete in the uh, Philadelphia Catholic League, which is one of the most competitive leagues um, you know, in the state. Um, and there is also the athletics uh, page of the website that I do, you know, turn you to once again, um, since we are in this virtual world. Um, coaches emails are on the website. Um, I know some of the kids talked about their experiences with our sports team and how, you know, that's driven them and that's, you know, why they came to Carroll. So I highlight that again for you. But please, um, you know, if no one has any other last minute questions, um, like I said, visit the pandemic admissions information page on our website, you know, for the admissions piece reach out to people, um, you know, the kids highlighted our community and that goes out to you guys as well, you know, as, you know, potential families, we want to hear from you. We want to help you. We want you to make the right decision for your student, for your child, for your family even. So it's really important that we do hear from you, um, even though you can't be on our campus as much as we would like you to be this fall. Um, whenever you see an email from me as an eighth grade family, please read it. Um, some of them can be quite lengthy, but it is the only way that I can communicate to all of our applicants as well as all of our prospective students. Um, so please read them. It has a lot of information for you um, that can help you, you know, navigate the rest of this admission season. Um, but I'll, you know, give it another couple seconds. If there's any other questions, um, please um, drop them, like I said, in that Q&A. If not, always email, um, call us, reach out to us. Um, any panelists want to add anything um, before we drop off tonight? If you do, please absolutely speak now. No, everybody said everything. Um, Michelle, great job. Go Patriots. Oh, uh, thanks, Chip. I agree. Absolutely. Um, please follow us on our social media pages as well, especially for our sports highlights as we are starting next week with competitions, um, you know, because we can't have fans. Um, so that's important if you are interested in our sports teams. Um, any last minute questions? Doesn't look like I'm getting any. Eileen, did you want to say something else? I just thought of something that okay. was, something that I didn't realize was going to be a benefit of Carol until I was there. And that is that, um, you know, it's really hard to make the decision for your oldest child, what, what high school are they going to go to and everything. But once we made that, it was great that it was co-ed because they can all go there. And as my daughter entered and then my younger son, they are, were already comfortable. Um, walking in there and and i thought this is great like i don't have to figure out two different high schools for you know it it just it 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 was, had a ripple effect a positive ripple effect um that i didn't expect uh it, it was like a family decision so something to think about when you're looking around awesome thanks for that all right so um with that though i will end the session for tonight um, for those families who are, you know, on and you know someone who couldn't get on tonight, this will be posted um, on our website next week with along with the other session um, that we have on Thursday for other schools. Um, so please let your friends know that they can watch this or if they'd like to jump on another night, um, those links are going to be posted and sent out as well. Uh, but thank you so much for all the families who joined us tonight.
We hope to see you soon, eventually. Um, and thanks to all my panelists too. You guys did a great job. So I will end the session and have a good night, everyone. Bye guys. <laughs>